Hello and welcome to Sandersted Parish, to our parish Eucharist this morning, the Sunday of the 10th after Trinity. We we'll give you a very warm welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. During these days we continue to worship online. The risen Lord Jesus is present with us even though we ourselves are physically separated. And we meet in his name and we share his peace. Today we'll be thinking about a Gentile woman with great faith in Jesus. And later in the service we'll celebrate the Eucharist and you may wish to prepare a table with a candle and wine and bread. The links to the hymns are shown on the service sheet. All you need to do is click on them uh, and join in the singing. And if this is your first visit to one of our services or if you'd like to know more about the Christian faith then please do get in touch with either uh, Reverend Canon Martin Greenfield or myself Reverend Jeremy Groombridge and our contact details on the website and we begin our service today with that wonderful hymn Love Divine All Loves Excel. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. As we prepare for worship, we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord our God, your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. So freed from our sins, we're able to say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we say together the Collect 
for Sunday the 10th after, after Trinity. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After that, Martin will come and preach to us. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In my last sermon, we had the story of Jesus walking on the waters of the lake. And I posed the question, will you put your faith in Jesus? Today we have the story of the woman with a great and persistent faith. And I ask the question, will we have a great and persistent faith? You see, I sometimes wonder whether as Christians today, we give up too soon and too easily. Faith. Jesus was impressed by the woman's faith. He was delighted by her faith. In fact, Jesus was always pleased whenever he met men, women or children who had faith. However, when he didn't meet with faith, he was disappointed. On one occasion, he went to his hometown of Nazareth and he met people there who were rude to him and stubborn. And the Bible account tells us that Jesus could not do many mighty works there. And he was very surprised that they didn't have faith. Great faith means persevering. I wonder whether we give up too soon and too easily. And us in all saints here, let's persist. And the way we're going, let's persist in working with God for his kingdom to come in this area. Working with the difficulties and the challenges and persisting. Let's continue to pray and support everything to do with our children and families work. We, we've done so much and now we've appointed our new children and family pastor, Chris Newman. Let's support him. Let's be persistent and let's not give up until we bring our work to, to have results. And, and speaking of Chris, please will you pray for Chris and Sam as pray for God's help that they will be able to sort out their housing issues and very soon be able to come and live in this area among us. Thank you. Great faith means persisting. Let's not give up too easily or too soon. Now, of course, faith in Jesus does not remove life's difficulties and problems. We live in the world just as everybody else does. I would say, if you want an easy and a cushy life, well, don't join the Church of Jesus and certainly don't get baptized to be a faithful servant and follower. No, if however, you want a life of joy and purpose and a life 
that's based on the truth, then yes, come, put your faith in Jesus and join in the work. Let's together get on with seeking, working and praying for God's kingdom to come. Great, for, great faith means persisting. Let's not give up too soon or too easily. We've had the story read to us there in Matthew chapter 15. Jesus left Galilee and he moved somewhere nearer the coast for a while. I think he'd gone there to get a rest and also because for a while he wanted to be away from the presence of those who caused him problems and were opposing him in every place. And there was the woman, the woman who had a daughter who was terribly ill. And she made the decision, I am going to speak with Jesus. I don't know how long this will take, but I am going to speak to Jesus so that my daughter gets cured. Well, she found the house and I can imagine her standing outside and the Bible says she was crying. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. I say she was crying. And when, I mean, when, when the Bible says crying, it means shouting. The woman was shouting and she carried on shouting because she wanted to be heard. She wanted those inside the house to hear her shouting and she carried on shouting until she got to speak. Jesus. When you and I phone a bank or a utility company, we know what's going to happen. They put you on hold. They say, your call is important to us. We're sorry to keep you waiting. And then they provide irritating music to fill in the gaps while we wait. And dialing a utility company is a question of persisting. Well, it was like that for this woman. She persisted. The difference was that it was she who provided the irritating music. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. She intended to be irritating. She was going to irritate Jesus and his followers until she got to speak to him. Great faith means being persistent. This woman didn't give up too soon or too easily. Many of us were young when we put our faith in Jesus for the first time. And statistically, people who are younger are more likely to put their faith in Jesus than those who are older. It's just one of those things. And that's why our work with children and families is so uh, strategically important. Jesus said, Unless you become like little kids, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, I was 13, as I've told you before, when I put my faith in Jesus. But my 13-year-old faith would not have been enough when I was in my 20s and 30s and so on. The faith of a child needs to be developed and strengthened. The church speaks about the means of grace for doing this, and it means regular Sunday worship. It means regular reading of the scriptures. It means learning through practice to pray with others and on one's own. And it means taking every opportunity to put our faith into practice. The faith of a child is not enough unless it's developed for when we reach our adult years. And I think I come across many people who call themselves Christians who have a genuine faith, but it's the faith of a child. And it's not the kind of faith that would have achieved what this woman achieved. Great faith means persisting and not giving up too soon or too easily. Finally, the woman did get to speak to Jesus. He didn't say anything to start with, and he made her wait, finally. And she came to him, she knelt down, and she said, Lord, help me. And Jesus said that bit about it's not right to take the children's food 
and toss it to the dogs? I, I really don't quite know why Jesus spoke like that. I've thought about it. I've read and I've pondered this and I don't fully understand. I really don't believe that Jesus was being rude. I really don't believe that Jesus wanted to refuse her. We, as we read the Gospels, we find that Jesus never refused anyone who came to him for help. And yet he spoke like that. I said, Jesus was silent. You see, I can say that I know what it is to pray and ask God for things and hear nothing but silence. I know what that's like. And Jesus made that woman wait. And I also know what it's like to pray and ask for something which I'm quite sure is within the will of God. And then I have to wait. I have to wait and wait and wait. You see, as Christians, if we're to have a great faith, we need to persist. We need to continue and we must not let anything put us off. We mustn't let anything give, make us give up. One of my favorite quotations is by the former American president, Theodore Teddy Roosevelt. He was a president about a hundred years ago. And incidentally, he's the man after whom teddy bears are named. And this quotation isn't about Christian faith and Christian discipleship, but it is about being persistent. It is about enduring. It is about not letting setbacks put us off. It is about not taking too seriously what other people say. I think it's a good quotation. Let me read it to you. It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, uh, that is, he, he makes mistakes, who comes short again and again, who knows great enthusiasms, who spends himself in a worthy cause. Um, my brother, my sister, if we are to follow Jesus and build his kingdom, that is a worthy worthy cause because it will last forever who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst if he fails at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat two things to say the first is Roosevelt speaks as if it's only men who could be like this. Well, of course, it's all of us, women included. And second, he talks about failing. Yes, we may fail, but the cause of Jesus will not fail. Let's persist. Let's have great faith and carry on. Great faith means persisting. Let's not give up too soon and too easily. I'm coming to a close now. That woman was confident that Jesus would give her what she wanted. And because she persisted, in the end, Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. And her daughter was healed. She got what she wanted and persistently waited for. Now, the Bible doesn't give the woman's name. God knows who it was, but we don't know the name. I've thought quite hard to see if I could come up with a, a suitable name that expressed the woman's character and her persistent faith. Well, I'm, I've not been able to come up with a name. Perhaps you could as, perhaps you could. But I have been thinking about that woman's character. I wonder what you think. Timid or stubborn? Hmm, I think stubborn. Passive or pushy? I think pushy. Quiet and polite or argumentative and noisy? I think the latter. And Jesus said of her, woman, you have a great faith. And that's the kind of faith 
that Jesus wants to see in us. Let's learn how to persist and not be put off or give up too soon. Amen. So now we say together the Apostles' Creed in which we declare our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Sandra is going to bring us our prayers of intercession. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, we pray for the world as all nations struggle to overcome the COVID-19 virus. We ask for your mercy and protection, praying that a way may be found to contain the virus and put an end to the suffering, misery and economic damage that is being inflicted on so many people. We pray too for the people of Lebanon after the catastrophic explosion that recently occurred in Beirut. Bring peace to that troubled nation, we pray, and look in mercy on those who have been bereaved and injured. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we come before you, fearful for our own economy. We've known little but growth and prosperity, and now we face financial insecurity and an uncertain future. Grant that those in power may ensure that corporate greed is regulated and we are protected from corruption and folly. But perhaps more importantly, we pray that you will grant us your perspective on money, that all things come from you and of your own do we give you. May you be our hope, our security, our confidence and our future. May money be a tool we use to do good rather than an end in itself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the church in our land and across our world. It'd be easy to despair at the division, intolerance, lovelessness and selfish ambition which marks so much of the church. Give us faith that you have plans for church, that your kingdom is to come through it and you will make it spotless and without blemish. And may we set our own sights on that hope. May your will be done in the church as is in heaven. We pray especially for the parish of Sanderstead. Give us grace as we make decisions about the future of St Edmunds and St Anthony's. And as our new children and families pastor, Chris Newman, begins his ministry in the parish, we pray for your encouragement and blessing so that through his work and through initiative like the Virtual Holiday Club, many may come to know and love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Father, we pray for one another, for those who are unwell, fearful about the future, lonely or bereaved. In the quietness we name them before you now and ask you to draw close to them. We remember those who've gone before us and who are refreshed in your kingdom. May we look forward to the day when we share with them in the glory which is everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now for the peace. Seek and work for peace. Peace in your heart, 
peace in your spirit, peace in your mind, peace in your home. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You bring forth bread from the earth. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You create the fruit of the vine. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your son. You, you embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened, he opened his arms of love on the cross and, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Father we, we do, do this, this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, Father we, we do, do this in remembrance, remembrance of him. His, his blood, blood is shed, shed for all. And we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory. Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As, As we, we eat and drink, drink these holy gifts, make, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So let us pray. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ welcomes you to his table. Draw near with faith. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Sandra, the body of Christ, given for you. Amen. Jeremy, the body of Christ, given for you. Amen. Sandra, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Jenna, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
and we say together the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May you be transformed into the likeness of Christ hour by hour, day by day. And may the Lord renew you and refresh you. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go out from this place and serve the Lord. In the, In name, the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And now we sing our closing hymn and the links on the service sheet. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's book?